Well, the pandemic and violence towards the American uh, Asian American communities, leaving many afraid for their families and even their own personal safety. KCRA 3 Stephanie Lind reports on the effects and the repeated acts of racial violence and what they're having. Your hair is all over the place. <laughs> Mom Letitia Lintag makes the trek from Pollock Pines to Rancho Cordova every week to cheer daughter Zayla on at soccer practice. The event, a family affair. The fresh air helping to lighten a heavy burden many Asian Americans have come to bear. My son was called uh, a racial slur that was derogatory towards Asian Americans on the school bus. The COVID-19 pandemic spawning a virus of hate in 2020, with documented incidents of harassment and assault escalating in the Asian American community. Lintag says what happened to her son is nothing new, and she worries for her family's safety. My oldest has been instructed not to walk by herself. My son's getting ready to start high school in fall, and he's been given the same instructions. Asians were not only fighting the pandemic, but we were fighting racism. Dr. Carol Lee Tran is a clinical psychologist and author who teaches at UC Davis. She says constant exposure to racism and acts of bigotry can affect the brain. Awareness of racism causes us to be hypervigilant. It affects our prefrontal cortex. It affects the amygdala. These are areas of the brain that control affect and emotion. When we have these incidents, we watch them on TV, we hear it on the news, we feel all these things in our body. Trauma advocates say now felt by many Asian Americans. This has to stop. Asian Community Center Senior Services President Derek Lam ringing the alarm. His Sacramento-based organization working to keep seniors feeling connected after a spate of coast-to-coast -coast attacks on older Asians. They feel afraid of going out because they're not sure if they will be the next target. Telling us nearly all ACC residents are now vaccinated to safeguard against fears of contracting COVID-19. His team also conducting telephone wellness checks. This is uh, when I was in Omaha. Reaching residents like Vicki Beaton, who immigrated to the U.S. from Taiwan in 1975. Kind of a scary, really sad, you know, and uh, uh, definitely have to be more cautious, you know, and uh, hopefully and uh, I'll be okay. We need to understand that the seniors' fears are warranted. Experts saying acknowledgement of mental trauma is an important first step. We want to let them know that their fears are real, they're warranted, and that we're gonna find ways to help them to be able to do what they wanna do to go out. So we're gonna go with you. We're gonna walk with you so that you can get your exercise so that you don't have to be afraid. Letitia, who is also a therapist, is now working with her child's school principal on how to have conversations with students on racism. Because this is not okay. And kids need to know that that's not okay. And experts say it's important to combat the stigma of seeking help for mental health. It can start with a conversation with your friends and family and simply exercising compassion for those who might be going through mental health issues, ultimately recognizing that there is no shame in getting help if you need it. Reporting from Sacramento, Stephanie Lynn, KCRA 3 News. And according to the American Psychological Association, Asian Americans are three times less likely than other racial groups to seek treatment for mental health issues. Experts say this can be tied to a number of reasons, including the cultural stigma that associates mental illness with disability, the model minority myth, which assumes that Asian Americans are compliant and successful, also language barriers, difficulty accessing health care and insurance, and a lack of mental health professionals trained to handle issues culturally specific to Asian Americans.